There's a lot of stuff to bump into when you're playing hockey. Flying pucks, slashing sticks, super sharp skates, plus boards, goals, and oh yeah, the other guys. That's why players wear state-of-the-art equipment, protection that's always evolving. The best kind of injury is the one that doesn't happen. And in hockey, obviously equipment is mandatory. This equipment has been tested uh, for reliability and safety and certainly has evolved over the years. When I was a little kid and I played hockey, the equipment is nowhere near what it is like today. It's lighter, it's stronger, and it fits more to the player's body. It will absorb and reduce the number of injuries that occur at the most common points of the body. For example, in order to absorb the will of a puck, in order to reduce the uh, force from a collision on the ice with another player or with the glass. Specific pads have been created to protect from serious injuries. For example, wraparound shin guards were developed after a skate blade severed a tendon in a player's leg. Skates are like razor blades, so you have 24 razor blades floating around the ice at any given time, and that can be very dangerous, particularly if it hits an artery or a nerve around the neck or wrist. We are 50 feet from the bench so that when something happens that may be life-threatening, we're immediately available to take care of it. The heart gets special protection, for good reason. It happened to a former Blues player. Several years ago during the playoffs in Detroit, Chris Pronger took a puck to the chest. It caused a condition called commotio cordis, in which case the conduction of the heart muscle was disrupted, causing the heart beating not to occur. This caused a disruption of the blood flow to the brain. He passed out on the ice. It was an emergency situation. He had to go to the hospital as a result of that. Because of that injury, it led the equipment manufacturers to create different equipment in order to protect that part of the chest. And you might not know the defenseman's little secret. Defensemen have super secret skate protectors called shot guards, and what they do is actually prevent damage from a puck flying just above the ice where they might hit him in the feet. But the guy who takes the most hits is the goalie. Back in the day, goalies didn't wear head protection. Now, with carbon fiber masks, their protection is literally bulletproof. You know, a slap shot can go over 100 miles an hour. And a goalie not only is at risk for having a slap shot hit him in the face, but he can also is at risk for a concussion from hitting his head on the goalpost, from hitting his head on the ice, going down to make a save, and from an opposing player hitting him, such as a knee, a skate, or a stick. Therefore, the face match, which was originally what goalies wore, has now evolved into an entire helmet and face mask complex in order to protect the head 360 degrees around. Nobody wants to deal with a head injury or an injury to the upper body. It's all about protection and prevention. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and certainly any time we can prevent an injury on the ice with the appropriate equipment, then we're going to prevent a significant injury, perhaps a life-threatening injury. The Washington University orthopedics team is at every home game to make the most important saves. And that's the science of St. Louis Blues hockey.